Hi, uh, my name is Hamid Saleh, and in this talk, we uh, study the string matching problem in the massively parallel computation model or MPC. Uh, this is a joint work with Mohammad Haji Agai, Said Saddiqan, and Shiaori San. Uh, the MPC model was first introduced to uh, study the problems that we can solve in the MapReduce framework. Uh, many later uh, parallel such distributed frameworks, uh, such as Hadoop, Spark, and Flume, uh, were uh, inspired by the uh, MapReduce framework. Uh, a key feature of MapReduce framework is that we can solve problems with input size n using machines that have sublinear local memory, for example, n to the 1 minus x. And uh, the idea is to distribute the workload among these machines. And ideally, we want n to the x machine so that the total memory is linear. Uh, the MPC model was first introduced by Karloff et al. and then refined by the later works. Uh, so that it captures the computation, uh, computational power of uh, all of these uh, frameworks that are widely used in industry. Uh, in this model, the input is initially uh, distributed among the machines, and uh, the machine can uh, communicate with each other like any machine can uh, communicate with any other one. And the process is consisted of several rounds. At each round, each machine can uh, perform a local computation uh, on its, the data that it has. And uh, at the end of each round, uh, the machines can communicate with each other so that the total uh, size of incoming and outgoing messages of a single machine is bounded by its memory, or n to the 1 minus x. Um, in practice, the main bottleneck of uh, massively parallel computations is uh, its uh, communication phase. So uh, we naturally want to uh, find algorithm that use as a very uh, a small number of rounds. And we often uh, can give like sub, -sub logarithmic and even constant round algorithms in this model. Uh, the, the reason that we are not interested in logarithmic uh, uh, algorithms is that we can simulate any PRAM algorithm in the MPC model using the same number of rounds. And uh, also, if we allow the total memory to be uh, like n to the 1 plus x, we can use uh, filtering techniques by uh, latency et al to uh, solve a wide range of problems. And uh, the other, the last point is that we use sublinear local memory. And uh, there is a conjecture that we can, uh, that we cannot solve connectivity uh, better than logarithmic rounds. And uh, the, there is this one cycle, two cycle conjecture that says that even distinguishing between a cycle of length n and two cycles of length n over two uh, needs as, at least like n rounds. But for many other problems, such as maximal matching and MIS, we can give uh, a square root of like n round algorithms. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, we, uh, in this paper, we say the string matching problem. Uh, this is a very natural problem when we have like very large input uh, because uh, for example, uh, the, hu the size of human genome is larger than the memory of normal machines. So, uh, formally in this problem, we are given a text T and we also given a text P, which is a pattern. Uh, and we want to find all occurrences of P inside T. Uh, for example, uh, if the P, a string P is equal to CA, uh, it is uh, uh, occurred twice in T at two different positions. Uh, in the simplest form, both text and pattern use the same alphabet sigma and there are no special characters. Uh, in, uh, in this case, the problem can be solved in uh, O of n running time in the sequential setting using the KMP algorithm or the hashing techniques of cap Robin uh, that uh, are uh, from 77 and 87. Uh, 
and but in the parallel settings, for example, in PRAM, there is this work of Breslauer and Galil that solves a problem in log uh, log log n rounds. But we show that M in MPC we can solve this problem in constant number of rounds. Uh, we also extend the problem so that it, uh, the pattern can contain wildcard characters such as question mark plus or a star. And each of these characters have a different meanings and we want to uh, perform the string matching problem according to those rules. Um, but first we start with the case that there are no wildcard characters. Uh, we show that for uh, uh, any constant X smaller than half, we can uh, give a constant on algorithm that uh, find all occurrences of P in T. Uh, if the pattern size M is a small, for example, it's bounded by uh, N to the one minus X, we can use double covering technique in which we put uh, the, uh, uh, first we uh, partition the string into blocks of size S and we put each two consecutive blocks into memory of single machine. And this way for any match, we have the necessary information to check if like uh, this is a match or not. Um, but even for the case that the size of pattern is larger, we can use uh, partial hashing techniques. For example, we can uh, assort the hash of uh, every block inside the memory of every machine. Um, and we can do this because it is bounded by half. And also assort every prefix of block I and uh, every uh, every sorry every suffix of block i and every prefix of block i uh, i prime which is the block that matches that start in block i ends there and uh, we, we assert uh, all of this information in machine i and this way the machine i can have all the necessary information to check the potential matches um okay uh, now for the case that we have uh question mark character. The question mark character in pattern can be matched with any arbitrary character in text. For example, uh, the, uh, for the uh, string P here, which is A question mark A, uh, there are two matches in T that in the first one question mark is replaced by C and in the second one is replaced by D. Um, we can show that uh, this problem can be solved in constant on the MPC for uh, X smaller than half. And uh, we uh, also note that this uh, constraint on X is not inherent to our algorithm and we, uh, we can solve uh, the, this problem for any constant X with uh, one over one over X rounds. Um, but anyway, uh, Fisher et al. in 74 showed that uh, this uh, pr problem of uh, string matching and question mark wildcard characters can be reduced to the convolution. And uh, to do that, they uh, define these MP variables that for every non-wildcard character, it is uh, ordinal number of the character. And uh, for uh, a wildcard character, it's equal to zero. And they replace each uh, character in text and pattern with two uh, other elements that, uh, that in uh, one of them uh, is MP of that character and in the other one is in inverse. Uh, for example, for a string T and P here, we, uh, uh, if we can convert them into these two arrays. And as you can see, the question mark is replaced with two zeros. Um, the convolution of these two arrays uh, gives us the uh, uh, ability to check uh, for um, matches. For example, if we want to check if uh, index i is matched, uh, we, we can check if this uh, the summation of these multiplications in the definition of convolution is equal to two times the number of nine wildcard characters of pattern. And they show that uh, if uh, this uh, if th this is not a match, this uh, 
equality doesn't hold. And uh, for solving the convolution, uh, we can uh, perform a fast Fourier transforms on both arrays. And after that, we can just do a pointwise multiplication and do a reverse transform. This way, we can solve the convolution problem in uh, O of n log n time in, uh, in the sequential setting. But also in uh, MPC, we can solve F50 in a uh, constant round. If we perform a bit reversal operation on the input, we have uh, this graph of dependence that uh, uh, has nice properties. Um, this, and this graph is defined as uh, like uh, when a variable at any iteration of the al algorithm, uh, the, for example, the Kulituki algorithm for solving FFT, uh, depends on the value of another variable in the previous uh, iteration, we uh, put an edge uh, between these two uh, elements in the graph. And we can show that we decompose this graph into butterfly graphs. Uh, if we, for, uh, for example, use the Kulituki algorithm with radix n to the one minus x, we can uh, fit this uh, butter uh, butterfly subgraphs into each machine and solve the FFT problem in two rounds. Uh, one of the applications of constant run FFT and subsequently constant run convolution uh, is the knapsack problem. Uh, in the knapsack problem, uh, or more specifically, unweighted knapsack problem, we are given a set of, set of items A, and we want to find a subset of these items with the larger sum that is smaller than a threshold T, which is O of N. Um, uh, we can use uh, an algorithm of botany et al to reduce the problem when every item is small into uh, the convolution. And uh, as we mentioned before, we can solve convolution in constant round of MPC. Uh, for the large items, which are the items with uh, size at least T over K, we know that there are at most k of uh, uh, these items in uh, a solution. So uh, if, uh, if we can solve the problem separately for these large items, then we can uh, merge the result of uh, small items and large item items together using a single convolution. Uh, to solve the case with large items, we randomly distribute them into k squared groups. And uh, we can uh, infer that there is at most one item of uh, solution in each group with high probability. And uh, then we encode each group into a vector, which uh, for uh, any item in that group, there is a one in uh, the size of that item and zero uh, everywhere else. And uh, what we need to do for large item is to just find the convolution of all of these Xi's. Um, so what we can to do is to transform this uh, every Xi using FFT algorithm. And uh, we can, uh, and uh, we should note that a transform uh, array using FFT, it can be represented as a polynomial of a degree T. So the point, uh, when uh, we uh, do the pointwise multiplication uh, of the transforms, the resulting polynomial can have a degree uh, of K squared times T. Uh, so uh, we, uh, to, uh, don't uh, uh, to, to avoid errors uh, in our computation, uh, we pad every uh, array xi we have with uh, enough zero so that their size is uh, k squared times t. And with a blow up of uh, k squared in the total memory, we can uh, like uh, pad every xi, then transform them and multiplicate them, so, multiplicate them so that uh, using a reverse transform, we have the convolution of all these arrays. Um, 
Okay, so let's move on to uh, our other results, which is a string matching with uh, two uh, remaining wildcards, which are a star and plus. Uh, due, to, due to the lack of time, uh, we don't go deep into the solution of uh, these two cases. Uh, in the case of a plus wildcard character, uh, when there is a plus in the pattern, the previous character can be uh, repeated arbitrary number of times uh, in the text. Uh, so for example, here we have a, a string P which has like plus wildcard and we can see that like uh, the, uh, for example, there is a K plus here and there are two Ks in uh, text T that are matched with this uh, K plus. Uh, in the pattern. And uh, we again solve this problem in constant land of AM, M, MPC. And uh, what we do is to uh, perform run, uh, run length encoding uh, or RLE on, uh, S, on the text and pattern. And uh, we compress each block that has uh, the same characters. And this way we have like a uh, number of uh, uh, pairs that represent each block and uh, the first uh, item is the character and the other one is the length and uh, for some of them we have a uh, plus here which means that the length of this block should be at least two and uh, we uh, reduce this problem to greater than matching and uh, afterwards we uh, observe that this is a subset of the subset matching problem and uh, using the result of colon Harin Han from 2002 we can solve uh, we can reduce uh, the subset matching into a sparse uh, convolution and we can also also implement that a sparse convolution in constant random of MPC in the case of a star wildcard uh, there are some star, star characters in the pattern that can be matched with any substring of arbitrary size. Um, so in this case, unlike uh, question mark and plus, we don't have a positive result, uh, even in log rounds, but uh, by a simple reduction to connectivity, we can show that uh, we need at least log rounds for uh, solving this uh, wildcard. Uh, but, uh, however, we solve the prob problem in two uh, natural special cases that might arise in practice. Uh, the first one uh, is that uh, the, uh, if we like a separate uh, pattern from the star characters, uh, we end up with a bunch of sub patterns. Uh, if the size of every sub pattern is bounded by uh, n to the one minus x, then we can solve the problem in log n rounds uh, and uh, with x smaller than half. Um, the other case, the special case that we can solve is that when, uh, when no two sub patterns are uh, prefix of each other. In this case, we also solve the problem in log n rounds of MPC. Uh, thanks for watching.